With the preseason behind us and the initial roster set, we bring in the start of the 2022 regular season with our annual Welcome Home Luncheon. And we pair the old school with the new school in our new series, Commander Code, highlighting the legends of our franchise off of the field. And Logan Paulson joins head coach Ron Rivera in his office to break down the offseason in the film room. Plus, with the season opener quickly approaching, we examine how the Commanders get to start the season on a high note. on into command center julie donaldson with logan paulson right here okay logan this is the last weekend you get off before football uh what are, what are, what are you guys doing right now i mean you, you i'm probably, not you doing used anything to... i'm watching i'm getting ready to watch football is what i'm doing i'm really excited for the season so, so guys are just gonna rest relax kind of get their mind and bodies right before I mean, we... this is unusual because like when i played they didn't have this week kind of leading into the season right it was preseason then you played so i think uh, i saw some guys getting out of the airport getting some movers going to the airplane so <laughs> they're going on vacation for sure no opportunities to go to beach just yet um if you do we've got a few days off because it is also a holiday weekend with labor day coming up here which mark the official end of summer, which means football is officially back. Well, to kick that off, uh, we have the Welcome Home Luncheon. It was the 60th annual that was held at the MGM National Harbor, kicking off the regular season. The team continues to celebrate its 90th anniversary season. The luncheon featured tributes to the team's historic legacy, as well as honoring last year's team for their hard work both on and off the football field. So here's a list of the winners from last season. The Community Man of the Year goes to Charles Leno Jr. with his Leno Claws and charitable efforts off the field. Special Teams Player of the Year was Tress Way, of course, and then Military Award went to Jamin Davis. He comes from a big military family, always involved there. Offensive Player of the Year, Terry McLaurin, no surprise, second straight 1,000-yard season. Defensive Player of the Year, John Allen, no surprise, as he made his first Pro Bowl, had a career-high nine sacks. And there was also the inaugural Legacy Award, which got us to Hall of Famer Daryl Green. Uh, you were there as well. I, I think I told you, I said you have to go. You didn't really have to go. Uh, but it's always kind of a nice because it does signify. I mean, it's mm -hmm. something that's very traditional to this market, to this team. It was the 60th annual. And of course, it goes to raise a lot of funds for the Charitable Foundation as well. So there's a lot of great things that happened there. Um, but it was a little bit different for you now going this time as oh, opposed absolutely. to a player? Yeah, absolutely. It was way different. I think it was, I got to appreciate a little bit more the, like the event. It was great to see all the legends there, all the, the old guys around and they honored them you know in a really nice way to let them walk out with their position groups like they would have when they were at the lunch and when they were playing which was really cool and also just to see the final 53 that's a little unusual in the past it had been the full 90 from training camp so to get that 53 this is the commanders these are the legends all together at the same time was pretty cool and the legacy award going to daryl green it was really kind of great he seemed to really kind of appreciate that so. honor because it's not just what he did on the field of course we know who's actually outstanding with his play on the field and deserves many 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 accolades already in the hall of fame <laughs> for that uh, but also his community work as well and he stressed how important that is and and is saying that look you could be one of those next. He told guys like you don't have to be out of the game for forever. Sure. You just have to be somebody that's involved that played for this team. Yeah, I think that's a great lesson too. And I think, you know, especially given the, the the group of people that were there, obviously current players, but there was probably, I don't know, what do you think, 25, 30 older guys there mm -hmm. that have been around for a while. So great to see some of those guys, guys that you play with. And I think that's an awesome message that he's bringing to them, basically saying like, hey, like let's, let's help the community. Let's use this platform in a positive way. You have to remember that it's always a little bit more than just the game. Uh, and so many people excited to be there in attendance as well. We also got to reveal the next 10 of the greatest players cool. uh, as we do go into our 90th season. So here are the names that made it. Um, I don't know that there's really any surprises here. Of course, Ryan Kerrigan, he was there in attendance yeah. as he's still kind of working out whether he's going to be in the coaching staff or not. London Fletcher, of course, he's going to be with us all season <laughs> long in the booth. Chris Cooley, D'Angelo Hall, Santana Moss, um, Trent. Well, I mean, anybody in here that kind of stands out to you maybe more than the other? Um, you know, I played with all these guys, or most of them, and it, it's cool to just see them all get acknowledged. I think a guy like Leonard Fletcher is someone that I have just the utmost respect for as an individual. So great to see him on there. Obviously, Kerrigan's a good friend of mine, so really happy that he's on there as well. And then Trent Williams, even though he moved on, getting an opportunity, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, Kerrigan was saying it was quite an honor to be there and that it was fitting that he and Trent went because they were drafted in back-to-back -back seasons. Yeah. Uh, so really great to have them there, be honored for that and for everybody that was in attendance until next year. But now this means the season is official set and ready to go. And that also means, as you pointed out, the 53-man roster 
well, they've got the guys they plan to roll into the season with. The main theme of this year's roster, though, it's youth. The average age for the players in Washington's roster right now is below the league average of 26 in about a month or so. And with such a young core, head coach Ron Rivera and general manager Martin Mayhew know that there's plenty of room to grow and build together this season. I'm pretty excited about that more so than anything else is that, you know, this is a group of guys that if, if, if we continue to add the right pieces to it, you know, you've got a core. I mean, I think we have 24 or 25 guys from the last three draft classes that are on this roster. I think that's what it was. So you feel pretty comfortable about that and, and just think that, you know, this is a young group of guys with some veteran guys in the right spot that could help lead them and direct them. And, and, and you know, this, this can lead to good things. And we've got a bunch of hardworking guys that do things the right way. They enjoy being together, enjoy working together. You can see when Brian came back in the building, the feeling that guys had for Brian, you know, and that's across the board. So we've got a good group of guys here. Uh, and, you know, I, I think we've, uh, we've upgraded in terms of football character pretty dramatically probably over the last three years. Well, it is time for our Keys to Winning presented by the Maryland Lottery. Play fast, win fast with fast play games from the Maryland Lottery. So coach mentioning that there's a young core um, to this team. The keys to having success when the team is so young. Last year going into the season, Logan, he said that he wanted to know if there was enough maturity in the room. But now you have a lot of those young players that mm -hmm. played the game and kind of understand what's expected of them. But they're still really young. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you have a young team, it's good from a coaching standpoint because they are going to do what you tell them to do. They don't have any pre-existing biases, right? They're going to come in and play at a high level. The, the, the issue with a young team is that they don't have the experience to kind of know and make decisions on the field in real time. And so all these guys you mentioned that played last year that, you know, maybe had some immaturity issues, they are now in leadership roles. And what do they do for you, right? So I think it's really interesting because you just see people grow up as leaders, as players, and that's what you need to see when a young team's coming together how the leadership handles it, and can they mentor that younger group? You talk about some of those guys being leaders already. I mean, Terry McLaurin, right. he is a young player still. I think we almost forget mm -hmm. that just because he's had such a huge role on this team since he was drafted just a couple of years ago. Um, with that captain on his jersey, on his chest there, as well as Chase Young even last year as a rookie, yeah. um, or it's a couple years ago as a rookie being coming in and being asked to step into those roles. Now there's a challenge of them because they have had a little bit more playing time than you would have had there been a whole bunch of veterans stepping ahead of you. Now there's the challenge of saying, okay, this is the unit we're running with. Mm. You still need to have a little bit of a veteran presence, which is one of the reasons I do believe they went out and got Carson Wentz as well to kind of lead that sure. unit. How does that help? Because you do need to have somebody to kind of help control when those emotions and those plays do come about a little bit. Yeah, I think it's another reason why you bring back a guy like John Bostic. You say we want him on the roster for his mentorship capabilities. And again, it, mentorship is, is a complicated thing, but it's like, how do you study film? How do you approach meetings? How do you take notes? And having guys in the room who've got that skill set, mm -hmm. who can teach you how to be a pro are invaluable for a young roster like this. So like you mentioned, Carson, John Allen, I think is a great example, a young player, but kind of carries himself with a tremendous maturity. Bostic bringing that kind of personality back in, I think is huge. Uh, the rookies, that's one of the biggest adjustments coming to life in the NFL. A lot of them already told us that the biggest difference is, is that it's it's much quicker. <laughs> the, the hits come at you really, really fast to your point of saying that now they have to react quickly in the sure. game. Uh, there's a couple of guys now that are going to their second or third year. Are there certain names that you might really be looking forward to saying, okay, let's take that next step? Oh, yeah, I think uh, there's a couple guys. I think Jamin Davis is one. You know, in training camp, he's done an excellent job in terms of kind of developing a physicality, um, an understanding of how defenses are trying to attack him. I'm really excited to see how he matures going this year. Another guy that I've, I've been very high on is Sam Cosby. When you just watch him, he just looks like a pro's pro. Tremendous athletic upside. Really excited for him. And all of those players that you just mentioned had a lot of time playing last year sure. as mm -hmm. well. Uh, so we'll see. They always say that the game slows down once you get out of your rookie year, which means you can just go to the instincts instead of having to think where you need to go because then you're a play behind. <laughs> so the team is not done making adjustments though to the 53-man roster to add some depth on defense. Washington claimed cornerbacks Tariq Castro-Fields and Rashad Wild Goose off of waivers and they're bringing back linebacker John Bostic as he was recently released by the Saints and running back Brian Robinson Jr. Well of course he was moved to the reserve slash non-football injury list. Now you can find the complete list of transactions as well as the full practice squad on commanders.com. Still to come, you ever wonder how the players prepare for game day? Both Jonathan Allen and Washington alum Brian Mitchell give us their answer in Commander Code, that is next. And with head coach Ron Rivera preparing for the upcoming season, we send Logan Paulson inside his office to talk about the defensive side of the ball.
Welcome back to Command Center. So expectations are high for head coach Ron Rivera as he enters his third season in Washington, D.C. To help get you set for the season, well, we are bringing you a brand new show, Command Center Coach Commands with Ron Rivera, where we cover all the top storylines heading into the upcoming season. Here's a preview of this week's debut episode. The coverage here, right? It, it, again, if, if this blitz is on time, even though I think Cam Girl could be a little better here, like this is a sack, right? right. Well, see, the, 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 the hard part for Cam is the, the, the stutter step is what gets him right there. Yeah. Okay? Continue to take space away from the receiver. All right? Now get to him where you force him to bubble even more. Right, right here, he's in a straight line, and all he has to do is get leverage on Cam. If Cam doesn't stutter step and gets into him quicker, that, instead of coming straight across, he'll have to take that more up the hash. Right. And if he takes it more up the hash, what he's going to find out is, you know, we're going to have a safety in position that he might be able to help. And that's a very subtle thing, but on yep. both of these concepts, right? Yep. You just want the receiver to just take a basically two extra steps Correct. to let the rush get home and then let the coverage affect the play. Absolutely. In this particular instance, with, with, with Bobby rolling over, to, it's almost a half position. That's if Cam can keep him on the hash, mm -hmm. right? Look, yeah. at, look at the position Bobby's in. Right. Bobby could have been in a much better position to help him. Absolutely. Okay. And, and it's, again, it's also important to know that like he doesn't need to take anything outbreaking here because William right. Jackson III is doing a great right. job with his eyes right there. Correct. Yeah. Wow. That's that's it's so it's, it's so very subtle. subtle. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Inside access, like you're going to get nowhere else. You can watch that debut episode Saturday night, 7 p.m. on NBC4, and then also on our Washington Commanders YouTube page and Commanders.com. Now, that is not the only show that we are getting excited for and gearing up for as this season is here. We have a new show coming out called Commander Code, where we are pairing an alum with a current player, where they're talking about their journey through the NFL and answering your question. So here is Brian Mitchell and John Allen. I'm a D lineman. And the danger, like, mm -hmm. this is for real. So I'm about to go to war. Yeah. And I look at my guys, I gotta stop talking before I get excited, start, start but, sweating. But, but, like for me, Woo. I grew up with a military dad. Same here. And he always said, if they are an opponent, that should get pumped up right there. Anybody from their side of the ball talk out the side of their mouth to me Ooh. in pregame. <laughs> you talk and then when you get on the field, you stop talking. Once I cross the line, it's you, all over. You, it's football time. You, lock, you locked in. I locked in. I'm ready to go. I love, oh, I love that. <laughs> For me, I feel like the hardest part about playing in the NFL is managing expectations. Playing ball is playing ball. I've done that my entire yep. life. But it's the stuff that goes along outside of it. I think for me, it's the expectations of other people. Hmm. Yeah. It's, 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 it's bestowed upon you when they expect you to do something not knowing what you actually do. Yeah. People don't understand how tough it is to go out there <laughs> and battle a guy your same size or your same strength. All game, other guys fall into your leg and then coming back the next week to be, you're not ever 100% after your first game. Never. Currently, I'm a classy man. I, I like Kendall Fuller, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. obviously you can go out there and buy jewelry and all that, but I, don't, I, I think that's just like, I yeah. like classic, like, he got the good hair, got the real nice, like, suave suit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just, I'm a classic guy, so I, I think I think Kendall. Kendall, I like that. I'm not going to sit up here and try to toot my own horn, but I think it was me. Because <laughs> I was born at the top in D.C. I was born at the top in Philly. And I changed the whole tune in New York. Those skill guys, I'm because telling you. I'm just... serious. <laughs> First of all, you got you got to specify. I'm a D tackle. <laughs> He's a skill guy. I'm so gonna the, start running towards the sideline <laughs> and get up field on so him. So the only I'm time we run. only time we go meet is if he do, if he throws a bubble screen, and that's my game's not in space. You know what though? What I think is, I, I watched John in the weight room, and I was a weight guy. Yeah. And I did weights in college that were remarkable. For a 198 pound quarterback. Yeah. I power clean 385. I bench 435. And I squat 615. 
That's a lot so of weight. I, when I watch your stuff that you were putting up, I, I, I believe guys that really put the work in in the weight room in the off season. Like I always tell people, I tortured myself in the off season. Yeah. So I can have fun during the season. Yeah. And I think you do the same thing. Are you about to eat dinner here? Yeah, my wife is right now. I am about to say, you guys are more than welcome to sit with me and my wife if yeah. you want. Excited for that. Of course, we love any time we get to go to DC Prime. So let me ask you, Logan, how did you prepare for your games? I mean, early on, I was like crazy superstitious and I had to put my pads on a specific way, tie my shoes in a specific way, but it was stressing me out too much. So I said, once I put my helmet on to go out for the game, like that's when I'll be ready to go, kind of come color high water. And that's what I stuck with. So <laughs> keep it simple. Yeah, Just get the helmet, simple. make sure you protect the <laughs> noggin and get out there and, and roll. Um, did you have somebody who had the best drip? Do you know on the best team? Best drip. What Meaning like they, they look snazzy. Yeah, they look snazzy. I'm yeah. sure somebody looks snazzy. D Hall. I mean, D Hall is yeah. always a guy who looks really nice. Multiple suits in the suitcase. One for the plane. One for before game. One for after game. And I was like, I wear the same suit every single day. So not me. Maybe D Hall. I was about to ask you, what was your drip? <laughs> not good. <laughs> you know my drip, Julie. It's not. It's not that high level drip. Oh, then look how fancy he is now. <laughs> All flashy. Um, how far you've come. Yeah. Yeah, we just need to get you some chains and some yeah, watches yeah, I think and that's everything. A good idea. Uh, there you go. Make sure you tune into Commander Code. We'll have that on our website as well. Still to come, though, with the regular season right around the corner, we take a look at the first four weeks of the schedule and how Washington can get off to a strong start. Before the team wrapped up the preseason, they took a quick trip down I-95 for their rally in Richmond. Commanders players and alumni got to meet with fans for an afternoon full of entertainment and memories to last a lifetime. We are really proud that as the game of football expands globally, it's breaking gender barriers, we can invest in that. So this is the commander's first investment in a women and girls flag football. Here's a look at the first games for the Commanders this season. Kicking things off at home against the Jacksonville Jags September 11th, then on the road in Detroit for week two. The last season, we had to wait all the way until December before playing either Philadelphia or Dallas. This time around, well, we're going to get to see them in weeks three and four. Time to go inside the matchup presented by FanDuel this fantasy football season. Get more ways to win with FanDuel. Okay, let's just talk about the first four games of the season here, Logan. What would you say is the most important game to win? Well, I think, obviously, if Tanner was here, he'd say the first game is the most important. I think we can all acknowledge that it is important to win your first game. But for me, the one that I'm most interested in watching, the one I think is the most important, is the game against Philadelphia. All of a sudden, they're the class of the division. They had an excellent draft. They had an excellent move in free agency. That's the team. And where does this team stack up? If that's the best team in the division, and Washington can beat them early, that's outstanding. It puts them in a great spot to, to win the division down the road. I mean, it is a little difficult to say because you want to win them all, right? right. So is one really more important than the other? But there's so much talk about getting off to slow starts sure. that they want this team to really come out to a fast start and with it being Jacksonville with it being uh, the Lions yeah. right after in Detroit where we've lost four straight up in Detroit yeah. mind you and you get to see kind of what they're doing in their hard knock series but both of those teams had absolutely atrocious records over sure. the past few years that's why they're on hard knocks that's why Jacksonville has a new head coach uh, that's why they got a number first round <laughs> pick overall again if you don't win those games I don't even know if you can be primed to win against Philadelphia though yeah I think there's a lot of fans that say, oh, you know, like 
the Jacksonville, Detroit are going to be easy wins or whatever, but I do think that um, Jacksonville is almost a completely new roster, completely new coaching staff, so it's going to present its own challenge. And I do think that, yes, you have to win those games. You have to beat teams you're supposed to beat. But I think it's really compelling. The, mo the, mo the game I'm most excited to watch, obviously, is the one against Philadelphia because I think that is the true test of how good this team is. What do you think will be the biggest challenge against the Eagles? Well, I, I mean, I think that they're just a really good football team, though, top to bottom. They've got better defensively. Their offensive line's outstanding. They've got Jalen Hurts, who's emerging. They've got great skill position players. It's going to test every aspect of this team, and that's why I want to. That's why I want to see the game. And if you hold up against Philadelphia, then guess what? The Cowboys—they are easy peasy. <laughs> hey, folks! Thanks for joining us on Command Center. We'll see you next time. Thank you.